Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Joe Stinkowitz, and I work at FANOA at the Ocean Prediction Center uh, in College Park, uh, uh, Maryland. Um, I'll be giving the weather brief here uh, this, uh, this afternoon uh, for this important race uh, with a focus on weather safety and with NOAA products that uh, help keep you safe and also help you make uh, decisions as you make your way uh, over the next few days uh, down to Bermuda. Uh, you'll be starting in the waters of the coastal of the coastal forecast waters of the Norton, Massachusetts office for the first 25 miles. So that includes uh, uh, the East Passage, Narragansett Bay, all the way down uh, out to 25 miles. And from that point on, you'll be in my office's warning and forecast responsibility uh, for both winds uh, and, and waves. Uh, on the right-hand side of this slide, so you can see that there are four zones, basically, in the offshore zones you'll be passing through. Uh, one is in the in the New England waters offshore uh, collective, and the other is in the Mid Atlantic waters uh, off uh, OFF NT2. And the zones are listed on this slide. Uh, after that point, you'll be in the high seas waters. Uh, so after about 250 nautical miles, uh, and that is uh, Bulletin FZN T01, and that basically describes the evolution of weather systems, especially weather systems that are producing winds of 25 knots or greater. Uh, it's designed for basically for Solus class uh, uh, ships. Um, the information is broadcast by high frequency voice by the Coast Guard, also by mid frequency uh, via Navtex, uh, part of the Global Maritime Distress Safety System. Um, FTP mail is a really good way to, to send an email and receive back what you request. You basically can get any combination of text and graphical forecast information and even gridded information via FTP mail. Um, and lastly, uh, on this slide, I have the National Digital Forecast Database. Now, that is grids of winds and waves that uh, you you can use, you can ingest into your uh, routing program and use those, they're forecaster uh, uh, sourced uh, using numerical model data uh, and adjusted. Uh, you can also get those through sail mail in a variety of different ways. Ocean.weather.gov is our website. Next slide. It is hurricane season, and no surprise that here we are mid uh, mid to late June, and uh, we've had our first storm. Alberto went into Mexico this morning. Uh, this is the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook. I highly recommend you look at this at least once a day, if not twice a day. Um, we are in a sort of a supercharged uh, uh, season, anticipation that way, and my next, and I, I'll show that in a second. But I just want to comment: there has been, if you've been looking at the models, and I assume you have been for a period of time, that there's no surprise that there's a, a, a disturbance off the southeast coast and approaching uh, the Georgia, uh, uh, North Florida, and uh, southern South Carolina uh, coastline, uh, mainly as a rain producer uh, at this point. And this forecast to be another uh, uh, system coming into uh, uh, the uh, uh, over the Yucatan Peninsula and into the Bay of Campeche over the next few days. Uh, products, Tropical Weather Outlook, there's a text that goes along with this, Tropical Cyclone Messages, which are the bulletins, which, the, which are really the forecast bulletins that are issued four times a day when there's an event, and then Tropical Cyclone Discussions, uh, which are, you're in the forecaster's head, and then also uh, you should be familiar with the wind speed probabilities as uh, that basically is going to give you an idea as to what the uh, uh, what the the effective or impactful area of a storm the 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 cone basically focuses on the center, but the, the wind speed probabilities actually give you where thirty four knots or greater will occur. Next slide, please. Okay, so I said supercharge, and there's a reason for that. So uh, warm water is the source that uh, uh, feeds tropical cyclone. This is an anomaly uh, map from uh, a couple of days ago of sea surface temperature, and it gives you an idea of the amount of uh, bright colors or warm colors. Uh, basically, those are warm anomalies. The Atlantic, the Western Atlantic, and, and the uh, uh, Central Atlantic is actually quite warm, and that's the one of the anticipated reasons for a higher than normal and, uh, uh, and impactful hurricane season. Next slide, please. Okay, on the Ocean Prediction Center website, underneath uh, on our uh, under data, 
uh, the selection, observations, and goes SST, we produce daily a 24-hour and a four-day composite of, of temperature from the geostationary satellites from goes east. And this is this morning's example, and you can see it's been primarily cloud-free over the last 24 hours. Um, there'll be another one uploaded uh, uh, tomorrow morning, generated and uploaded tomorrow morning, as you can see relative to the, uh, the rum line as to where uh, the features that we've been watching all for the last week uh, or so uh, how they've actually approached uh, fr from the West uh, with that southeasterly flowing uh, 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 core of the stream. Um, we also have a pr uh, product that's underneath the same, which is up on the lower right, the upper, the upper right is the, uh, basically it's the age of the data points. So where there are clouds and have been clouds, the, the data is older. Uh, and where it's new, which is primarily along the rum line, uh, is recent. So in other words, this data is pretty valuable. That looks to continue at least for the next uh, uh, day through tomorrow morning, at least. Okay, next slide. All right, a little bit more meat here in meteorology. Okay, this is a 500 millibar height uh, normalized anomaly. So what, what this means is where there are, are uh, the brownish colors or the more orange colors, that means that's a warm anom anomaly, and where it is blue, it's a cold anomaly. So in, in essence, two weather features are what are controlling the conditions in this race, the, uh, or the period of the race. The first one is that very, very broad, extremely broad pool of warm air of, of higher heights. Um, that basically is going to evolve over time. Uh, with actually splitting with a piece going east and reestablishing the Bermuda High, and another piece that's going to drift westward into the central U.S. Number two uh, that's listed there, basically, that's actually it's a series of what we call short waves. That's energy, a trough, basically, that's moving eastward. And that is going to approach uh, the, the upper Great Lakes over the next few days. And with it is going to be bringing a cold front across from the northern plains into the uh, miss, the uh, upper Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley, and approach the uh, east coast of the United States. The play between those two is going to increase the pressure gradient uh, off the east coast of the United States. And that's progressively going to move eastward across the rum line. Next slide, please. So this was this morning, uh, this is the 12Z uh, surface analysis that my office contributes to. Uh, and you can see the low down in the, on the south there, that's actually the tropical disturbance. And there's a little bit of displacement because of uh, 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 timing with the satellite. I wanted to get the uh, winds from the uh, two uh, scatterometers, the ASCATs. So here's, here's what the wind field looked like down the rum line uh, this morning. It gives you an idea what the high looked like. Uh, the white areas are very light winds. Uh, and there were winds up to 20 knots uh, uh, well to the south, but then also uh, right off the coast of, uh, say, south of Mouth's Vineyard and, uh, and uh, to the east uh, of George's Bank and that, and that area. Um, this is all going to change over the next uh, uh, day or so. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a 24-hour forecast, valid the time at 18Z, which is 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. This is basically start time, or the, the initial uh, starts. Um, there's a front across the Gulf of Maine, uh, and that's a backdoor cold front. What that means is to the north of that, instead of having northwesterly winds, there are northeasterly winds. That's going to sag southward and, and will be on the, in the process at that time of, of uh, making its way uh, south. This is sort of a double-barreled high, elongated high, not, un not unlike what you saw in the previous image, uh, from the mid-Atlantic eastward to north of Bermuda. And that's the high that I talked about, the number one on the, on the graphic. And you can see the possible tropical cyclone. That's the disturbance of the Florida coast uh, uh, at that point. The, the key, at least for tomorrow, is, that back, is the backdoor cold front and a little bit of wind uh, south of Long Island, uh, south, southerly to southwesterly. It looks like for the race start that the wind will be southerly in the, in the, in the bay, at least in the entrance of the bay. It's going to be close. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, this is two days uh, uh, in the future. Uh, this is the 12Z on the 22nd. So we're talking Z now. So this is 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and you can see there's not a lot of isobars between Bermuda and the East Coast. In fact, there's one. Uh, 1024 high, 1017 uh, low. Uh, there's a 1020 isobar. 
but but it's oriented for southwesterly winds. So there will be some southwesterly winds uh, uh, along and east of the coast, a, a bit down the uh, rum line. Um, and also, but there will be uh, weaker winds uh, in front of you as you're going down. Next slide, please. Okay, so the change between 48 and 72 hours is we have many more isobars. We have a few more, and basically the wind is filling in from, from west to east. Southwesterly winds, uh, and I'll go through the, the uh, details in, in, in uh, a little bit. The high has repositioned eastward, east of Bermuda. So in other words, we have pressure gradient all the way to Bermuda. That means we have wind all the way to Bermuda. Next slide, please. And this is 96 hours. Um, and here you can see basically the isobars have filled in. That means the wind is filled in. Uh, primarily southwesterly, uh, near Bermuda, more of a southerly component. But uh, uh, as time, it looked like it, it may be southeasterly for a period of time, but they come around to the south-southwest. All right, next slide. So I want to start here, and this is in remembering last uh, uh, two years ago. Okay, Th this is the high-res rapid refresh. And if you've been looking at that, uh, which I hope you have been and using that in your routing program, um, this is at 18Z um, and uh, from the 12Z run. So this is a 30-hour 30, uh, 30 forecast. Okay, I've drawn in where the, where the uh, uh, back what cold front is, but I've added something, and what I've added is the simulation of what the what a radar image would look like from the precipitation from the high res rapid refresh. Those are thunderstorms, and so there's a cluster of thunderstorms north of the of the front, and is sacking south. I'm saying this for a reason. There's still southerly wind over the bay. What the her is showing is that those thunderstorms are pushing out a boundary. And that boundary has weak winds behind this. this for those of you who raised two years ago, there's some similarity to this. Uh, so I, I just, just to give you a heads up, that you're actually going to see that boundary uh, in the her as it pushes southward. Uh, it looks to me like it's too large, but uh, and it has a memory in the model as it moves forward. It probably isn't that large. But that, that means this is a word of caution as you're using the her. Next slide, please. Okay, so same time the GFS already started with with this. This is start time. You get to see southwesterly flow south of Long Island, south of uh, New England, and then weak gradient as you get down the rum line. Next slide, please. Okay, for this, the wind is starting to fill in and broaden. Uh, you've got 15, occasional 20 knots, uh, and seas are just starting to come up over four feet uh, at, at this time. And this is 18Z on the 22nd, which is 2 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, um, yeah, on Saturday, rather. I'm sorry. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a stepping ahead 24 hours. This is the 23rd at 18Z, 2 p.m. And again, the wind has filled in pretty much all the way to Bermuda. Uh, you do have some southerly and south southeasterly, but has filled in 20 to 25 knots uh, along the rum line. Um, and this will continue uh, even through the next time step. Let's go ahead to that. Okay, so again, filled in farther down the run, the uh, run line and has filled in all the way. There's even 15 knots off of uh, Bermuda by this time. So a good healthy south, southwesterly, uh, 25, and there's some occasionally 30 knots in there uh, as this uh, front moves to the uh, coast. And next slide. And for, um, this is on the 25th on uh, Tuesday, um, there are, uh, you can stop to see the front, actually, the higher winds are pushing eastward, uh, but there's still wind from about mid down the, uh, the rum line all, uh, to Bermuda. There'll be another front that's coming off and kind of do the same thing on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so with that, thank you very much for the opportunity. Have a safe race. And I, I always like this uh, quote by John Rumanier. Uh, where basically he puts weather into the context that really it's the one thing that's in control. Thank you.